Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World at War, a new game out by Fury Software and published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is part 7, I think it is now, of an online, or of a, uh, sorry, of a live stream series uh, looking at this new game, and we've just recently completed the conquest of France as the Japanese, or as the Germans, wow, and um, it is August of 1940. That's mainly the, the big call-out. Poland has fallen to the Germans, uh, Denmark has fallen, Norway has fallen, and then, of course, the low countries of Holland and Belgium and Luxembourg, and then uh, the nation of France as well. Uh, we are now kind of in a bit of a dull or quiet period, uh, presumably, for a little bit of time. We may have to go to war in the Balkans soon, uh, but really the this is sort of the build-up period for the invasion of Russia that will take place a little bit less than a year from now if we follow the historical timeline, which may or may not be advisable. But uh, that's kind of the situation right now. We've beaten everybody there is to beat on the continent. We need to garrison our new conquests in the west, uh, but we probably don't want to keep the majority of our forces here. We probably just want to throw some garrisons in the French cities and move uh, to the east. Meanwhile, Italy uh, is engaged with Britain in North Africa. Uh, you can see here they have some forces that have just barely penetrated into British Egypt. Uh, the British are beating them back with superior forces. The Africa Corps is forming up in Italy, and that is the situation at the moment. The Africa Corps is not on the map yet, but they will join soon. The Italian Navy is bottled up in the Adriatic Sea. I had some folks ask me last time around why I haven't sallied that forth. And frankly, just to be honest, uh, the reason I haven't sallied it forth is because... It's not really a good idea. <laughs> the, the British Navy in the, in the Mediterranean is vastly superior to the Italians, and so it, you basically get your fleet destroyed if you move it out too aggressively, at least early on. Now, maybe the British, I think they moved some of their fleet offshore of uh, Italian East Africa, so maybe that's not quite the scenario at the moment, uh, but at least that's, that's sort of what's in my mind at the moment anyway. Meanwhile, speaking of the situation in East Africa, the Italians are being overrun slowly by the British and by some colonial forces in South Africa. We do have some garrisons as the Italians in Mogadishu, uh, in Gaunt, uh, and then we have a garrison attacking Khartoum in the south of, uh, sort of in Sudan. And then we have one corps of infantry which is attempting to cut off two British infantry corps advancing into the heart of uh, East Africa. That's the situation there. In the Pacific Theater, the Japanese really haven't had to do much yet. They're fighting the Japanese or the Chinese, which is a big de ordeal in of itself, but they haven't had to like expand outward yet, mainly because they're not at war with the United States yet. At the moment, we have one uprising going on in Amoy, and then we have an advance in the south of China. We've taken Changsha, we've taken Henang, uh, and we've taken Nanning, uh, as well as uh, Quilin or Kuiling, or however you pronounce that. And we're driving on the Chinese capital of Chongqing. But the problem is we're advancing down some narrow gorges and, and mountains, so we really have no easy way to get at them. There's kind of one narrow roadway we've got to go down, and that is problematic for bringing forces to bear against the Chinese. So I kind of think our offensive will probably sputter out here before we get to Kwai Chao, uh, but that's sort of my thoughts. We'll see if that really comes to fruition. In the center and north of China, massive Chinese reinforcements are pressing against us, uh, but they haven't defeated us yet. They're just kind of being somewhat of a nuisance, uh, and that's again the situation in August of nineteenth uh, or August nineteen forty. Um, trying to think if there's anything else we want to do. I think one thing we do want to do is invade French Indochina. Uh, that'll actually give us another advance in uh, route into western. Uh, China, and it'll also, southwestern China, and it'll also give us additional resources and bases for when we go to war, for when the Japanese go to war uh, with the British in Singapore and the Americans uh, in uh, the Philippines. So I think what we'll do there is we'll, we'll start moving some troops into position to get that underway. We're going to move this one in army to the south to kind of approach Amoy, where there are uh, partisan rebels. We'll deal with them first. And we'll move the 21st Army as well. So we're going to pull two army groups out, uh, mainly because we just don't have a long enough front to engage the Chinese over here anyway. So a lot of these troops are going to be kind of wasted. Uh, in addition to that, we've got some troops coming ashore, uh, hopefully. Uh, but we'll... Actually, let's move these guys to Fuchou. Um, and we have some additional troops coming ashore, as I've said. Uh, let's move you here and you guys here. Um... 
some tanks and some infantry coming ashore in China here in, in a turn or two, uh, which should help uh, with the uh, situation in China as well as we kind of advance into Indochina and then press our offensive in the south of China. Um, let's move these garrison soldiers back. We'll move these infantry back. Uh, one, two, three. I don't think I've actually progressed close enough to communist China to trigger them to join the war, but uh, I think we started getting some alerts last turn that the, the Chinese communists were concerned about uh, the advances the Japanese are making in, uh, in uh, China, so we need to be mindful of that. Meanwhile, these cities all have to have troops in them. I think what might make sense is to pull out some of these troops from uh, Manchuria and replace them with some garrison units. I can't do that yet this turn, but... Um, oh, wait, or can I? No, I can't do that this turn, but I am going to send some garrisons in here to maybe at least liberate this one army, the, Qui the second Quad Kwantung army. Uh, and maybe a core or so. I don't. Th I think I can. I'll be fine if I just put garrison units in these cities. But essentially, the game says you have to keep gar troops in these cities, otherwise the Russians will go to war with you. Um, so I assume a garrison is good enough, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. It really would be great to be able to uh, increase our uh, presence in uh, China while we have the advantage of not having to worry about being at war with the rest of uh, the Pacific. With that being said, I think we joined kind of on the end of a turn, so I think we're good there. Uh, the Japanese do have 996 uh, investment dollars or 996 uh, industrial points available to them. Uh, they have no diplomatic chits, so there's no investments that need to occur there. Uh, we can spend some of that money on research, uh, which we're already doing some research, but I think what we could do is we could invest another... Uh, chit 150 worth of uh, into industrial technology um, and then I think uh, improves morale of cares escort cares 5% level because they also benefit from them. just I'm not sure what I want to add, uh, what I want to move up uh, the investment chit to me probably want to invest in anti-aircraft defense which we don't have anything going there and then maybe one more in fighters. Oh, I'm investing German dollars. That's smart. Well, good to know. Anyway, um, the investments I ba were based off what I was seeing on the screen here. So that works for Germany, too. Um, we still have $900 left. Uh, for the Japanese, I'm going to go ahead and make some investments as well. Uh, likewise, I'm going to invest in anti-air defense. I'm going to advance or invest. Well, we're already investing in heavily in fighters, uh, in advanced tanks. Probably should invest maximum research funding already reached. So I don't think we can invest more there. Oh yeah, we can't invest in anything more as the Japanese. Their maximum research is 2,000. So is the Germans actually. The Italians is 1,200. Uh, and then the Italians have 224 points. We're already investing in in logistics uh, slightly. Ground attack weaponry. I'm going to advance, adv invest in advanced tanks and spend the majority of Italy's money there. Um, so if we close out, that still gives us $941 as the Germans, $871 as the Japanese, and $71 as the Italians. The Japanese, I'm going to go ahead and purchase a couple more units. We're going to purchase a couple more garrison units with infantry weapons of one uh, to improve their overall uh, lethality. So we'll invest in three more garrison units. I think we'll invest in maybe one more tank unit. We could do light tanks, but those, I think, I'd rather just go full-blown into tanks. We have, do we have one heavy tank? Unavailable till January 1944. Huh. Kamikazes are also a thing in this game. That's interesting. Um, tactical bombers or fighters. Huh. Let's invest one fighter. And we'll invest one bomber. All right, so we're investing in the Air Force for the Japanese fighters and bombers, uh, tactical bombers uh, as well.
So I think that's good for now. Uh, meanwhile, the Germans, uh, let's make sure we don't forget about our, na our naval units out here, because I feel like I always do. Looks like we've already issued orders for these guys. But I would like to build some naval units as well. I'd also like to try and get some of these naval units through the uh, channel and toward the Bay of Biscay, and I'm not sure how risky that is or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a heavy cruiser through to La Havre. We'll station it at the port there. And then I'm going to move a destroyer to Cherbourg. And then we'll move a battleship into the Hague. So we're going to keep them in ports, which I'm hoping uh, increases the survivability of those. I'm going to move fighters forward to the close to the bases that they're stationed at. So they should hopefully act as interceptors in the event that the British attack. And then I think we'll leave the rest of these guys as is. We are going to go ahead and... Um, I'd like to... Let's move these guys over here. I'd like these guys to re uh, sort of rebuild their ships in harbors. Sorry, I'm trying to think out loud. Lubick, it's only an eight. Scharnhorst needs to be reinforced. We can upgrade the port. Oh, we can upgrade ports with any aircraft defenses. How expensive is that? That's only 10 jets. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to upgrade all of these ports where these we, the, where these warships are located to give us a better chance of defending those uh, ships that we just moved in there. So all these ports that we just took. It's part of France, but now part of Germany. So we'll upgrade the anti-aircraft defenses of those ports, which hopefully make them these bases harder to hit for the uh, for the French. And I think that does it. Uh, the majority of the rest of these units have already been moved. The Italian forces are moving toward Trieste. Um, I think maybe, should we reinforce the sub? Yeah, we'll reinforce this guy up too. And then maybe we'll kind of slowly feel our way out into the Ionian Sea with the Italian Navy. Just because if we can move it toward the coast in the uh, North Africa region, I mean, it could be very beneficial for our, ship, for our Navy to come to the aid of our army. But... I also don't know how risky that is, so we're going to move troops forward slowly. We'll also move some fighters down here. Oh, we can't move them. I already moved them this turn. But I will move some fighters and bombers down this way as well. And we're going to move some of these garrison units a little bit into the desert. I had been keeping them as garrisons here in these various seaside towns to prevent the British from spearing in and kind of getting around our flank and, and hitting them, but I'm actually going to move them out so we can extend the flank in North Africa a bit. Uh, meanwhile, I think that's about it. We still have these troops in uh, Iraq, so we'll reinforce these troops in Baghdad. Hopefully it'll make them more effective against the British. There's a rebellion there going on at the moment. And... Uh, this first Japanese force, we're going to land here. These tanks, we're going to move to the border with uh, Indochina, and hopefully they can just sweep down Indochina and conquer it. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to do it. We're already ordering some of our army units to move. Doesn't look like these guys have reinforcement options. Um, we really need to kind of figure out our garrison situation here in China to prevent additional uprisings. I'm hoping there's nothing that happens in Fuzhou. These guys are going to move here to secure it. Can really only deal with one uprising, I feel like, at a time. But yeah, that's going to end this turn for the Germans. I guess we do want to purchase some... Uh, garrison units for the Germans as well. So let's do that before I forget. We'll give them infantry weapons and anti-aircraft defense. We'll purchase maybe six of them. Because we are going to be basically pulling all of our troops out of France and uh, Belgium and Holland.
So we'll uh, purchase those units. They should be ready soon, and we'll move forward to the next turn. Mao Zedong is concerned at the Japanese advances in China. The Free French are seizing power in French Equatorial Africa. So the Free French are rising. The Triumphant is seized at Plymouth and given to the Free French Navy. And General Leclerc forms the uh, Francis Libres. So I'm assuming that's the Free French. Diplomatic success in Bulgaria for the Germans. 15% access swing there. Allied raiders are disrupting our convoys in Norway. The U.S. is forming a committee to keep out of the war. Italian is developing some additional logistics levels. Um, you can see here that we're getting only 24 out of a potential 40 supply out of Norway because of those British commerce raiders. Meanwhile, getting 100% of our Swedish uh, supply route. We're spending $10 in the construction of work at St. Nazaré and 25 imports from the USSR for a total income for the Germans of 405. The Germans and the minor allies are kind of clumped together. The Allies and their minor allies collect 101, and the Japanese collect 100, and, or sorry, 300 or so. So, calculating supply, and now we'll get to watch the AI move through its turn. If I was to say what the theme of this episode was, it was probably so far uh, building the uh, the mechanisms for occupation or building the occupation army or whatever you want to call it uh, you can see here the chinese are shifting some troops internally they've got so many goddamn troops i'm curious what happens if we were to take chungking with the jet with the nationalists just surrender or would they keep fighting damn british attacking my subs Man, heavy air battles going on here in the channel. The British Navy has sallied forth their carriers into the channel. The British Navy also is operating off French Equatorial... Or not French, they're operating off East Africa. Heavy air battles going on over France. Maybe no Battle of Britain, but perhaps an early air war in France. So far, okay. That's, I was going to say, so far no damage done against our fleet in the channel. That lead destroyer just took its first hit point of damage there after several raids. Meanwhile, the British continue driving on Baghdad. Chinese are launching counterattacks in the south of China. Mogadishu has fallen. Okay, I think Nash or I think Communist China is going to join the Nationalists at this point. We haven't closed to uh, close enough to the the, Nash the Chinese border to automatically trigger it yet. The the Communist Chinese border yet. If you get within two hexes of Chinese Communist China or three hexes of Yan'an, they join the Nationalists. But I think maybe if you have too much success in China, they also join the the Nationalists. That certainly seems to be the the mood of what's about to happen or going on. Hey, no name. Are the torpedo armed biplanes on this, how good are they? Uh, that's a good question. Bulgaria is joining the Axis. Thailand annexes colonial ter territory from French Indochina. Germany, Italy, and Japan sign the tripartite pact. So Thailand just got bigger. We probably should be spending some diplomatic points on Thailand because they did join the Axis, I believe. Or at least they joined the Japanese. The Graf Bay was sunk. China's uh, receiving supplies from French Indochina via Hanoi Kuming Railway, yet we may be able to stop this if we exert some diplomatic pressure on the French authorities in, in Hanoi. Uh, 25 to bribe them. Sure. Alright, so we've got a new, sup new headquarters being raised. In, um, that'll be Army Group North, we'll say. Okay. 
So our fighters took a pretty big beating last turn. We lost some pretty heavy casualties as we were trying to move our fleet into the French coast. We just made contact with the Royal Navy's uh, carriers. I kind of want to... Let's go over here. Can we bomb these guys and move on the same turn? Doesn't look like it. Well, I can't bomb from this far away. But... Our surface ships can attack the British Navy. So my battleship can escape into the the relative safety of uh, Brest there. And actually, have we built up the uh, port there to have more anti-aircraft guns? We have not, so we'll do that. Um... Unfortunately, I wasn't transiting enough of my navy yet. So I can't really bring more ships to bear against them. Without leaving them exposed and with no air cover. Okay. Upgrade this battle cruiser. Should have actually spent money on it to reinforce it. These subs will reinforce, they're going to lose the majority of their experience. Set mode to silent. And sort of stealthily advance through the channel, hopefully. We'll set these guys to silent as well. Advance them north. Um, so yeah, we're transiting the majority of our navy through to the Atlantic. We did lose a cruiser last turn. These guys are on silent, so they're not hopefully going to be... God damn it, they just happened to move to the hex next to a British destroyer. <sighs> oh, I can't set their mode to silent. So our cruiser down here was destroyed, I think. Alright, so... Fighters are going to move to Brest to be in close to help against the uh, British carrier. I'm going to guess this carrier is going to withdraw back to England, given we've destroyed the majority of its uh, striking power. But we'll see. Move another Stuka toward the Balkans. We're going to build up a, a strong force of uh, attacking force near the Balkans. I'm going to operate these guys over there as well. Um... And then we're just going to kind of keep moving soldiers toward uh, toward the Russian border, I think. Mostly on foot. That's really what we're going to do here. Just because I don't want to spend the money if I don't have to, and if I've got a year to move these guys into position, as I think I do, or at least, you know, six months or so, I'd rather move them on foot. Where I can. Um, of course, infantry is slow as fuck, and we may end up needing to transit them via um, rail at some point. But for now. And let's actually leave some Italian garrison troops in France. I don't want to leave a whole army group. But... I'll also operate these guys. And I think I'm going to reinforce North Africa with this armor. We'll leave one armor unit and one uh, infantry unit in Paris. I know that's kind of probably what, leaving one actual army in France is probably not a good idea. It's probably overkill, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
Um... Yeah, I don't think the biplanes are as good in this as they are in War in the Pacific. I don't think we have to worry about that. All right, so Bulgaria, meanwhile, is joining the Axis, so that's good. Let's get their troops onto the Greek border in the event that they go to war with Greece. Um, yeah, so what do we need to do here? Let's pull some of these troops. Can we... Focus on these guys? Yes! All right, we just destroyed a British Special Forces unit in the south of Egypt. Uh, we'll advance these guys over here. Meanwhile, we're going to pull this... Do we want to pull this army unit back, or do we just want to resupply him? We'll just resupply him. And then we'll attack here. Nice! So we did some pretty heavy damage to that British unit. So uh, its army is down to four strength. I'm assuming he won't attack with that yet. I think the British 7th armor will arrive soon, so we will end up facing some high-quality British armored tanks uh, before too long. But uh, not yet, anyway. The Navy, meanwhile, I think will venture out just a little bit further. Just to try and see if we can find the British, na the British Navy. Kind of surprised I'm not finding it. I'm a little bit uneasy about like racing out here to bombard the British. I'm sure they've got warships somewhere. Well, shit. My destroyer took damage from an enemy artillery piece. Alright, so I think I'm going to try and focus on this British uh, infantry unit here. Maybe in the forsaken hope that we can actually do some damage. Definitely seems to be mistaken at this point. At the very least, their uh, morale is shot. We'll bombard Mersa Major, whatever the name of that town is. I think we are the damage we did was strictly to the uh, port facilities, though. And then, can we... Oh, shit, I didn't mean to do that. Well, damn it. Alright, can we upgrade these guys at all? Yes, we can. Advanced fighters. Nice! So, gonna upgrade these guys to advanced fighters. Oh, we still have another uh, light cruiser over here, so let's... Hopefully it doesn't get picked off moving past Malta. But we'll advance that light cruiser to go join the rest of the force. And then these guys are going to... Move over here. Alright, meanwhile... Meanwhile, in the desert. Um, can we advance on Kartorum? Okay. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and, hear, and jump in here and end this episode. This is from a live stream that was taken from just the other day. Uh, this is part seven of our look at Strategic Command, World at War. And uh, so far, things are going reasonably well for the Axis. We've taken France, we've taken the Low Countries, Poland, Norway, Denmark, and we have now started our campaigns in North Africa while we're also trying to defend the Italian possessions in East Africa as well. With that being said, the, Ch the Japanese are dealing with some success in China, especially in South China, and they're on the verge of invading French Indochina to secure that valuable uh, region uh, as a staging board for staging, staging board, staging bed, staging springboard uh, for their eventual invasions into Malaya and the uh, British possessions in Singapore. With that being said, guys, I think this makes for a good stopping point, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Let me know your thoughts below, and as always, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.